hello, everybody. My name is Andy, and uh, this is my series of videos on Kerbal Space Program. Uh, I'm a little new to the uh, Let's Play video uh, community, but I, uh, I hope I can bring something interesting. Um, I expect to be playing uh, a lot of different games, but uh, Kerbal Space Program is uh, the one I want to be playing right now. So I know there's a lot of Kerbal Space Program videos out there, but hopefully uh, you've uh, watched all of Scott Manley's videos and you've watched all of Kurt J. Max videos, and you know maybe you can pop one of mine on once in a while. Um, I also happen to have a silky smooth radio voice that I hope is uh, enticing. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start this up, and uh, the name of this series is Kerbal Commander Andy. I adjusted myself as I said that. So uh, what I hope to do with this series is a couple things. First of all, I hope that you will learn how to play the game uh, if you've never played it before. If you're already an expert, I'm not going to help you. Uh, I... Uh, I know my way around the game. I know how to use all the systems. I like playing the game. Uh, and I know a lot of people have trouble just, you know, getting into orbit. Um, I can at least get into orbit every time without really too much trouble. So um, the other thing I'd like to do is just kind of force myself to play the game a little bit more. Uh, so I will be doing these videos regardless. If you don't like them or don't watch them, uh, they will still be coming. I expect, uh, I don't know how often I will do videos, maybe two a week, something like that, uh, but it kind of depends on my schedule. I have a lot of other uh, time commitments, but uh, that's why I'm doing these videos, so that uh, I can get on a schedule and I can play the game and have fun and enjoy myself. So I hope that uh, you will enjoy that as well. Uh, I also have sort of a, a plan in mind for how to how to do these uh, videos. So what I'd like to do is uh, get started into the vehicle assembly building. And I've already loaded a spacecraft here. So if you've never built a spacecraft before, I will talk about spacecraft building later on. But whenever I watch one of these videos, most people correctly sort of cut out all the space building stuff because it's spaceship building stuff because it's kind of boring to be quite honest unless you're the one doing it so i'm just going to load kerbinus one here which is a ship that i uh i have built uh and this is just an unmanned pod i'm going to try to run this like a uh you know a normal space program might uh, i'm going to start with unmanned flights and then i'm going to start uh, building a space station uh and then once i've done all that then i'll start sending kerbals up into space uh I, uh, I don't expect to crash a lot, but as we get into more and more uh, complex designs, uh, that might happen. So this one's pretty simple, actually. Uh, just a sort of normal rocket design, just straight up. I've got four booster rockets here, which uh, will get me uh, a little boost in the uh, lower atmosphere. Uh, and then I've got this little satellite up here, so it, it disconnects right here. So this is the second stage of the rocket, and then it disconnects here. And then after that, all this really has is the RCS. So RCS, if, uh, if you've never played the game before, I'll try to explain some of this stuff as I go along. Uh, the RCS is a uh, 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 rocket control thrusters system, something like that. I don't even remember what it's called, what it, uh, the RCS. Uh... Yeah, rocket control system? I have no idea. Uh, but what it does is it sort of has, like, compressed air in there, and it uh, pushes you around very easily in space. Uh, down in the atmosphere, not so much. It doesn't really do anything for you down in the atmosphere. But uh, this rocket should get us into orbit, and we'll have a little satellite up in orbit. So uh, enough of me yapping. Let's go ahead and, uh, and launch. Click this little guy to launch. I practiced, sorry, so I will clear the launch pad with, of my debris. Okay, so here we are on the launch pad, and uh, as you can see, we've got uh, everything set up here. I can uh, use my scroll wheel to zoom in and out. Um, I can hold, press and drag with my uh, right mouse button to kind of twirl around this thing. I've also got my staging over here. My staging is set up. Each one of these sort of orange headers sort of shows me where my staging is at. So this is my main rocket. 
and this is my booster rockets, and this these are the actual uh, docking ports, the docking uh, controls there. So they're actually these guys right here that are uh, holding me in place. Uh, this guy is the actual uh, release for these uh, booster rockets. When they are, they'll, they'll run, out of, they will run out of fuel first. So when they run out of fuel, then uh, then we'll actually uh, uh, drop those so we can uh, not carry around so much weight. And then when this big rocket runs out of fuel, then we'll uh, run stage two, which will separate that, and then we'll just have the main stage, uh, this upper stage here that we can fire off and get into the atmosphere. Uh, sorry, out of the atmosphere. We're not trying to get into the atmosphere. Um, that's wrong. So uh, once we get up there, we'll have this satellite. There's a couple of, there's some lights on there, and there is some uh, some solar panels and a little battery there. This is just a little uh, uh, satellite probe. Satellite probes were added to the base game in uh, 0.18. Um, Kerbal Space Program is in, uh, I, I guess, is it beta? Alpha? I don't know exactly what they consider themselves at right now, but uh, but it's an excellent game, and I'll have a link to the actual website in my uh, in in the link to the video. Uh, the people who uh, who create uh, this game are very happy to have people posting gameplay videos of it uh, because I didn't understand how this game was fun until I got to watch somebody play it. So hopefully you will have the same experience that I did and I can sort of pay it forward a little bit. But let's go ahead, and I'm going to throttle up. I'm holding down the shift key, which raises my throttle. Control lowers my throttle. And then the X key cuts it all off. So uh, you might have to worry about overheating with some rockets. This one will not really overheat with the amount of uh, stuff I have on here. But we'll go ahead, and I will fire off this rocket. Um... A lot of other people do countdowns. I'm not a huge fan of countdowns, but uh, I'll do one to start with, and you guys can tell me if it's worth doing. So we will launch in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Launch! I forgot one thing. I need to turn on my SAS. Hit the T key to turn on my SAS. That's a stabilization guy, and it's actually this little stack right there. Um, and what you can see is you can see these little rockets, rocket uh, wings here, are sort of moving around to sort of keep everything stable. Because if I didn't, this thing would kind of veer off course and it would not be very good. So I'm going to wait here. I'm looking at how, uh, how high up I am. Uh, to get out of the atmosphere in this game, I need to get to about 80,000 meters. Uh, that's approximate. Um, I don't know what the actual Earth atmosphere is. This is Kerbin. So, uh, we don't have Kerbin, Kerbin, uh, I don't know exactly what the atmosphere is like on Kerbin. Probably a little different. My solid boosters are now out, so I hit the space bar again to, uh, drop them off, and now I need to make my turn. I don't want to just go straight up, I need to turn over. So I'm going to hold down F to, uh, toggle my SAS off. I'm not really moving much. I'm going to turn on my RCS, which will push me over a little bit more. For some reason, this rocket does not really move without the RCS. Some of them will just move over very easily. This one does not. Turn my SAS back on. Whoops. There we go. SAS is back on. Now, I need to see how high I'm getting, because I need to know if I'm getting up high enough to get out of orbit. I have about a, a third of a tank of fuel left, so I'm going to hit the M key on the keyboard to zoom out, and now I'm looking at my uh, my orbit. This blue line is my the path of my rocket. So right now my Kerbin ap apoapsis, that's the highest I can get, my apoapsis, is climbing right now. I need it to get up to probably about 80 to 100,000, preferably as high as like 110,000 or so. It looks like I'm going to make it. Um, let me look at my fuel here real quick. Uh, I almost out of fuel. I'm still going. I'm just going to let this run out because it's not going to matter much when I have just such a, a tiny amount of fuel. All right, there we go, 112. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to release this because I don't need it anymore. So I'm just going to hit the space bar again to drop that off. I'm going to turn off my engines because I need to do some maneuvers here without the engines. Uh, and I'm going to hit the space bar again to shift up to the next... Uh, the next stage. I'll hit it. There we go. 
so now I can see, I know this is the stage I'm on because it's at the bottom. Now I need to get ready to build out my, my orbit here. So to do that, I need to burn at this point right here. So this little guy right here on the nav ball, this little green mark, that is the prograde. That means that's the direction that I'm moving in. So what I can do is I can actually, uh, if I am pointed at that little guy and I uh, turn on my engines, I will actually, this, this line will shift. This line will move because my orbit will get, uh, get much higher. But uh, I'm actually going to burn sort of straight horizontal to the Earth. This uh, this white line here between blue and um, between blue and orange here, that's really telling me that I need that's that's sort of me pointing parallel to the Earth. Okay, so that's what I'm going to try to do here. Hold that. Uh, now the other thing I can do is I can use a maneuver. Um, but I'm a little close to be starting a maneuver here, so I'm not going to do it uh, for this. But when I circularize my orbit, then I will. I'm just going to go on blind faith here that I'm doing this uh, accurately. So I'm about 24 seconds away from my apoapsis. I'm going to go ahead and start burning now. So I'm just going to hold shift and get all the way to 100%. Now I'm burning. You'll notice that my, uh, my blue line here is extending. I can zoom out. Now, if I pass my apoapsis, that's not the end of the world. I would prefer it to be in front of me the whole time. But I should be okay. I hope. If I'm not okay, then this will be embarrassing. So let's, uh, let's see if we get this uh, all the way out. I think I'm going to make it. If you don't have enough fuel at this point, you're just going to crash into Kerbin again. So here we go. When I see my periapsis over here, that's good. I want to build my apoapsis out to about 300,000. Perfect. All right. So my apoapsis is the highest uh, I can get in my orbit. My periapsis is the lowest. That's the closest to the surface of the planet. Now that also is where I'm going to be going the fastest because as you sort of get further away from the planet, the gravity is at its uh, least intense, but then it starts to drag you back down, and that's why you get closer to the planet, and that's why we're moving past. The idea is, in uh, with a you know with a with a vehicle like this, with a, a space vehicle like this, you're basically just moving fast enough in a uh, horizontal direction uh, that you sort of you don't cancel out the gravity, but you sort of pass the planet. So you're always moving down. You're just moving fast enough forward that when you when you drop, you drop past the planet. So you're s sort of looping around. Well, what I want is I want my apoapsis to be even on both sides. My apoapsis and periapsis to be even. Right now, my apoapsis is 295. My periapsis is 111. That's not what I want. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a maneuver. Again, I don't have to do this, uh, but I'd like to show you how the maneuvers work because it took me a while to figure out. So... If this is your first time playing the game, uh, then you can uh, check this out. So what I want to do is basically a maneuver is a way for me to say, um, in the future, I would like my orbit to look like this. How do I make that happen? So I can uh, click. I want this to happen at the apoapsis, so I'll click there just with the left mouse button. Notice it's telling me how far away I am, T minus 17 minutes. I can add the maneuver, and I get these controls right here, okay? So this one moves me towards the planet. This one moves me away from the planet. I've never used those. Uh, I'm sure they're worthwhile. Uh, this is prograde. This is retrograde. I'll show you retrograde on the um, uh, on the uh, uh, nav ball here in a few minutes. Uh, this These orange ones are there to sort of re-angle your uh, orbit. Uh, depending on how you came out of the... Uh, out of the planet. Now, I always try to stay on the 90 degree mark here, uh, but that doesn't always happen. Sometimes your rocket is off by a few meters here or there, and that can really uh, screw up your orbit. This one's actually pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Um, so you could sort of increase the, the, the tilt of your orbit or decrease the tilt or something like that. I'm just going to use this guy 
to say I want to move in prograde when I get to this point. And then I'm watching this guy, that's at 286. And the further you drag it, the faster it moves. That's 295, that's 296. You could get it a little closer to perfect, basically. You'll know it's perfect when the periapsis and apoapsis are sort of perpendicular, or on a perpendicular plane to your current. That's what this orange line is. This orange line is telling you this is where your periapsis and apoapsis will be. This is your new orbit, okay? So the other thing that this adds, let me turn off my SAS. Now, if I move back in this direction, now you can see my retrograde. My retrograde is when I want to slow down. So if I actually wanted to re-enter the atmosphere, I could burn at a retrograde and slow down to the point where my orbit would now re-intersect uh, Kerbin. I'm not going to do that, though. Uh, this blue dot right here is now the, uh, the maneuver marker. So I just point at the maneuver marker. You don't have to be perfect. I'm going to turn on my SAS to keep me pointed there. Now notice this orange side basically points me towards the planet. If I look at my ship right now, I'm pointed dead at the planet. That's not good. Uh, so, but the trick is with orbital mechanics, I can actually, I'm going to speed this up. I'm going to use the period key and the comma key to speed up. So the period key makes me go warp faster, time warp faster, and the comma key makes me slow down. I'm going to speed up a little bit. But you'll notice that this guy kind of shifts. All right, so I'm still pointed at this dot, but that dot's moving. So eventually it's going to get to, ret to my prograde, and then we'll go. Now, notice it's telling me how much faster I need to be going. I need to be going 114.7 meters per second faster than I am right now. It says, it's estimating I'm going to burn for two seconds, and it's telling me when I'm going to get to my burn point. Uh, sometimes if this burn time is a lot longer, like say 30 seconds or a minute, it's probably good to start burning a little sooner, uh, especially if you're trying to get into orbit, because if you don't do that, uh, you're, you're never going to make it out of orbit. Um, you're never going to make it into orbit, I should say. Um, so... Let's go ahead. I'm going to speed up just a little bit. Now, I have a tendency to kind of not pay close enough attention or move way too fast and then warp past this point, but it's so slow. Um, two minutes, one minute, slow it down. Okay, so I'm going five times speed. I'll get this down to about 10 seconds, and then we'll, we'll, we'll go back to normal speed. Okay. So 10 seconds, I'm ready. I've got my finger on the shift key. And we're burning in five, four, three, two, one, burn. And watch that green bar when it gets to zero, you stop. And I did pretty good. Uh, let's see here. 293 on this side, 301 on that side. So, and not perfect, but pretty good. 7,000 kilometers is not that far in, um, in orbital mechanics. To get rid of this guy, I just click it, and it goes away. Sometimes it's a little finicky. You have to click a couple times. But uh, there we go. We've got an orbit. We've got a stable orbit, and uh, we are in uh, a nice, cool, clean orbit here. I'm going to look at my ship. Now, I've still got about a third of a tank of fuel left, but I'm in orbit. I've got everything I want, so I don't really need this extra fuel tank anymore. Uh, I would prefer if it sort of stuck around for a while, but... Uh, I always hate getting rid of fuel, but uh, that's okay. It's better to have too much fuel than not enough, because if you don't have enough fuel, then you just have stuff sort of floating out in space or crashing into the ocean or stuff like that. So uh, I'm going to release that. I'm going to hit the space bar. That's a special extra sound effect from me. Um, and I'm going to do a couple things here. I'm going to turn my lights on. I had I put lights on this little satellite here. And then I also have this battery. Now this battery is gonna run out of juice eventually, but that's why I put solar panels on here. So if I right click on these panels, I can extend the panels. And now they are extending. Dun, dun, dun. Q2001, a Space Odyssey music. And if you wanna be really fancy, turn off your SAS and you can spin. Ooh, hit the E key or the Q key to spin like that. Now you got like a nice little 
spinning thing. It won't spin forever. It will actually run out of... Uh, it will stop spinning eventually, which I don't know if that's accurate to mechanics. I assume that, you know, once you start something in motion, it will just go forever. But if we watch this long enough, then it will stop spinning. But, uh, yeah, so that is my first Kerbal Space Program video. Uh, next time, I think we'll start uh, building the space station. Uh, please like uh, the video, and uh, if you l really like what you see, you can subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. Uh, and uh, hopefully we'll have a lot more videos like this, or even better, maybe, uh, especially if you hated this one. So we will... Uh, you can ask me questions in the comments. I'll be happy to answer any questions, but uh, enjoy my Kerbal Commander series. That's right. It's going to be called Kerbal Commander. It's super, super pretentious. But that's what I'm going with, because I already designed the logo. <laughs> Alright, so uh, thank you guys for watching, and uh, I will get out of here.